Kreitzer Radio. Obey your thirst for the truth. Because you're worth knowing the truth. Quench it with Kiter Radio. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burbies 99.5 FM. Chop, chop. And here goes Sammy. I represent for 99.1 Kaichu Radio, the radio with a difference. Good evening. It is 19 hours 31, and it is time for the very first edition of Room 592 with Dr. Yog Mohadio and a senior journalist of Kaitro News, Leonard Gill Dari. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you doing this evening? Yes, yes, we did. Is ready for the show, Mr. Yog Mohadio? Dr. Yog, are you there? Dr. Yog, can you hear us? Dr. Yog Mahadio, can you hear us? Yes, yes real live. They tell me, somebody told me that my face looked wrong. Um, quarantine has been good to me. I'm not sure about that. I wasn't quarantined. Since March the 2nd, I've been on it without a day off. Only a couple of days I took over the weekend. So I'm back. So if, if quarantine has been good, if you call that quarantine, well, I like quarantine. Walk is good. Well, the, the definitely yoga, and, and I tell you what, this was a wonderful idea, um, room 592. And 592 happens to be our um, telephone code uh, internationally if you want to, to identify Guyana, 592. And I thought that was very, very appropriate. Um, I could not have uh, bring that up in my head by myself. Um, and so, <laughs> I, I, you know, but let me tell you something. Guyana is indeed a wonderful place and this show and, and like so many other things that we should be doing, we should be uplifting the spirit of the people in these dark times. Uh, so uh, let us get the show on the road, my friend. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, the more the merrier. I said the more the merrier. So let's get the party on the road. We we definitely. I, I mean tomorrow, yo, and I would I, I would have preferred you to get into it. It's a very big day. What is tomorrow? But I'm, I, I think he's heard it. Working on it, on it look, Yog. Great. So in the meantime, Yog, while you're there, you're hearing us clearly? Very good. And you know, the, 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 this is a very um, uh, different time. You, you uh, down at your home. I'm in the studio here, and we're meeting with people from different areas. They have their own little room. So it, it is bringing a little uh, technological, uh, how you say it, uh, challenges. Um, and, and you know, with internet being the way that it is, we are going to um, be putting into some walls.
but yes, thank you very much. And, and I just want to get, um, uh, are we here and there if somebody, uh, if you're not here, and just, just tell us, because we, we're trying to, to get some, we have, okay. Yoga, um, you ha having any other indications here? No audio. Um, let me let me see what happened. Is good here. I'm hearing you pretty clear. Um, uh, not you. It's a host problem. It's not a viewer problem. This is not a viewer problem. It's a host problem. What we're gonna do, gentlemen? We're gonna take two minutes break. I think you we could take two minutes break and get just get back there because we be not sure. They said we're hearing from from look. You, they're hearing from me, but they're not hearing from you, Yog. So our brother Robert Trump is on. My brother, can you hear us? Uh, uh, Muhammad Riaz, I'm hoping we can hear. You can hear us. Yes, I'm hearing you very clearly from the studio down here at Saffron Street. Okay, they still can't hear. Let me get out and get in back. Right. So in the meantime, while Yog is joining us, you know, I, I think one, one of the names that uh, Yog would have mentioned there, Terry Gadraj. Terry Gadraj in the house, he'll be in a very short while, I think a couple of minutes from now. Who could we remember? Um, the, was it the Guyanese Babu? Guyanese Babu. Oh, yes, Guyanese Babu and a couple of other things. He's talking Indian immigration there. You can't get better than Terry Gadraj. He always brings a party to the house. So we will be joining him in a short while. I think Yog Mahadeo, while Yog is getting in and out uh, uh, wherever he's going, I tell you that in the meantime, we are very happy to be with you here on room 592, room 592, 592, the Guyanese code, brand new show. We're gonna bring not only election stuff, but other stuff, topics of discussion, big topics of discussion and get down to the nitty gritty and just, just flesh it out there. And so um, we have with us here uh, in our studio this evening, Kevin Smith. And so I think Dr. Yog Mahadi is back with us. You hearing us very clearly, sir? I can hear you clearly. Very good. I was telling about Terry Gadraj in the house. He will be yes. in a very short while. Guyanese Babu, what else? What else? I can't remember all the songs, but I can remember <laughs> National Park with Terry Gadraj. I could tell you about that. The man That's looks. Right. The man looks as young as you are. I think, I think we got to ask him whether he's not dying or anything, but I mean, there's a different show, different conversation, in, different time. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And so once again, let us say welcome to all of our brothers and sisters across Guyana, New York and Canada. Welcome to room 592. And let's get going then, uh, Leonard. Well, absolutely. York. What, what, what is room 592? What is this all about? What is it that you have well, planned? I'm excited. Well, Room 592, I mean, you know, it's like Guyana, as you know, 592 is, is Guyana, is our country code. And the Room 592 refers to this small country called Guyana where big things happen. We make international headlines. And so in Room 592, we want to discuss the things that makes the news and we want to unleash the truth. Every time we have a discussion here, we'll be addressing things. As you love to say, Leonard, taking the gloves off approach and unleashing the truth. That's what we hope to do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Well, you know, if you look towards North America and what the rest of the world is doing, social media has exploded media into a different stratosphere. And if we want to be the people that we want to be with the powers in our hands, we definitely got to do things differently. So guess what? Today, I, you know, I was so excited. Today we opened our lines for the first time. You know, I was a little nervous about it, Yog. 
And you know, sometimes we're afraid to, to shed tears. We're afraid to say that we're sorry, that we're scared. I mean, if we're about to go forward, if we want to go forward as a country, as, as, as mature people, we should not be afraid to say the things that, uh, you know, it may look as, make us look a little uh, weak, but it's not really weak. It makes us strong by admitting that we have these fears. Correct. And, and Leonard, let me just take this minute to welcome ex His Excellency, the High Commission Hello. of India to Guyana. As brothers and sisters, as you all know, tomorrow marks 182nd anniversary. It's 182 years since Indians were brought to Guyana under the indentured contract. And, you know, that's a long time, Leonard, 182 years. And we are going to welcome the Indian High Commission to our program. Um, he's going to bring us greetings and say a few words and hopefully spend a couple minutes with us. But Leonard, can you imagine your four parents came into this country over a, a, a 182 years ago? Well, I can't imagine. You know, there are lots, lots of stuff going through my head. And one of the things that uh, would, would, I would have to ask is, are we in a better position? Um, did we benefit? And of course, we would say we, we, we benefit tremendously. Who could forget about the Darlin Rice? and the many parts of culture, the sari, the dances, um, the, our weddings, our weddings with, with, with the seven curries right. and the going around the marrow and things like that. Lots of things that we could say we are very thankful for. So back to and, you, Yogi. So let us welcome uh, Excellency Indian High Commission to Guyana, Dr. Srinivasa. Welcome to you, sir. Welcome, sir. Uh, very good evening. Namaste to everyone. Namaste, sir. Thank you namaste. for having me on the show. Leonard, you take the program. No, 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 no. I, I think you sound better saying the master there, um, I have a little audio issue. Okay, yes, yes, I definitely go ahead. Um, hi, Commissioner, how are you doing? I'm doing good, and you? Pretty good, pretty good. Yoke says that he is here. He, he welcomed you uh, with open arms to this show here. And we want to, we, we have many persons who have joined us and they are listening to us across the country right now. But we have many joining us from North America, right across the Caribbean and Europe as well. And I want to hear some good words from you. In these dark times, we need some upliftment. Uh, you know, it's uh, always a pleasure to link up with the Indian diaspora, especially in Guyana, which has been like a, a great friend for us throughout all these years and uh, more than... Uh, uh, 180 years now, and that for us, uh, you know, uh, the Guyanese uh, Indians have a great significance uh, back home in India. Uh, both uh, uh, we have uh, many people who uh, fondly remember the bonds between India and Guyana, and also the way uh, the children of India, as we can say, came out of India in the early 19th century and. Uh, came and settled in all these uh, uh, then difficult lands and they built the nation, carved the nation out of it and with their amazing contributions to the economy, the political uh, uh, arena and at the same time uh, the cultural uh, uh, arena has been very richly and at the same time uh, very positively contributed by the indo guyanese I do thank you for that and Yoga, I'm not... I'm not sure whether you, you're back with us. You're back with us, Yog? Well, if, if not, uh, let me ask you, I, I want to ask you straight up. So tomorrow is supposed to be a special day, Indian Arrivals Day. It's been 180-something plus years since Indian arriving again. What is happening tomorrow? Uh, you know, because of this uh, uh, current health epidemic, uh, we are not able to celebrate uh, this uh, uh, arrival day. But uh, if uh, uh, we didn't have this, of course, uh, the High Commission would be having a function for this uh, special occasion. In fact, uh, ever since I have come here, uh, we are trying to see how best we can celebrate the unity of the indo guyanese and at the same time the uh, uh, presence, the very presence of the indo guyanese uh, uh, on this uh, beautiful uh, soil. And, and we uh, also want to work very closely with uh, uh, all, all, all uh, indo guyanese here in, in um, Guyana because uh, for us, uh, we are trying to see how best we can harness the, uh, the best talent 
of the Indoganese because ever since I have come, I have seen that the way they have contributed, be it uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the field of business, uh, uh, trade and commerce, uh, we have had uh, many excellent uh, contributors. Uh, one of them comes to my mind is uh, Mr. Yesu Prasad, uh, the founder of the Demerara Bank. Uh, we have had uh, 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 the uh, first Commonwealth Secretary General, Sri Sridhar Ramphal. We have had excellent contributors like Shunarin Chandrapal, uh, Rohan Kanai. Um, uh, we have had uh, historians like uh, Dr. Basdev Mangru, Dr. Clem C. Charan. Uh, we have had uh, 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 Mr. Ashok Ram Charan, who is well, well known in India. Uh, as pa part of the GOPIO, the uh, Global Organization for the Persons of Indian Origin. And, and, and India has been constantly trying to see in the uh, last few decades uh, to recognize people who have really contributed uh, to the uh, Indianness, to the global presence of uh, uh, the Indian origin people. And uh, we have instituted these uh, Pravasi Bharti Awards uh, uh, since 2002, mm -hmm. uh, wherein we try to see where uh, we can actually actively recognize and, and uh, 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 also promote the I I Indian origin people across the world. Uh, in fact, uh, a few of the uh, awardees which come to my mind are um, uh, ex-president uh, Sri Bharat Jagdev, then we have uh, uh, Sri Donald Ramutar, and then uh, we also have uh, uh, the amazing contributions uh, which are still there to be recognized in uh, other fields also. Well, yes, and I, I can tell you, and I'm not sure if Yoga is back. If Yoga is back, uh, maybe you could wave your hands in the air there, Yoga. Still having some technical difficulties. But let me tell you this. You mentioned a name or a couple of names. They have very big shoes to fill. But one of them, especially, I would have spoken to Dr. Yusuf Prasad over the years. Uh, one man that has really, really impressed me. If you sit with him now and talk, he's going to tell you a lot about his roots, about the little Lodi that he was living in and where he came from. And so, beautiful story. He's even written some books on it. So, Yoga's back. Yoga, over to you. So, uh, in the meantime, um, yes. Thank you. Hi, Commission. It's been good to have you here. And, sir, sir, as, as you know, we uh, we have a lot of our brothers and sisters from across the, the, the diaspora, from the USA. We even have persons from St. Kitts and Nevis and Canada and all over. Say a few words to them, please. Uh, uh, dear friends, my brothers and sisters uh, across the globe who are listening to this uh, broadcast, uh, uh, tomorrow, the May 5th, has a very special significance for all of you. Uh, on this day, the first ships came getting the indentured laborers uh, to work in the estates of then British Guyana. You all came here to find uh, a way out of the economic servitude back home in India, uh, then under the British colony. And after you came here, you worked the bad lands, you worked the difficult uh, nature of the terrain, and you carved a life out of uh, uh, a tough, uh, 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 tough nature. And, and uh, you have really been the true ambassadors of India abroad. You know, across the world, one thing I have seen is uh, people have this great appreciation for the Indian diaspora. Uh, I have served in the U.S., I have served in uh, South Africa, I have I've, uh, served in uh, Europe. Wherever I have been, people say that Indians are always hardworking, they are very self-conscious, and they are proud about their origins. You know, uh, they have kept alive the Indian culture, the Indian heritage, the Indian history in, in the way they work and the way they have been actively participating in, in the political, economic, sociocultural, and uh, sports arenas. Uh, we just wish all of you all the best in your uh, future endeavors. And, and as uh, uh, the Indian High Commissioner representing the motherland here in Guyana, I am really proud to be associated with all of you. 
and i am uh, uh, looking forward to working uh, with all of you in the near future in whatever way we can continue to strengthen the bonds between these uh, uh, between the mother country and the indian diaspora and and uh, we want to see how best we can harness the amazing talent that exists among the indian diaspora absolutely yog i don't know if i could put in there because i i want to as, as the high commissioner this so would you say that since you've come here that you uh, love the guy 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 this food more than indian food i have really enjoyed it actually you know the uh, the seven curries especially so i've uh, uh, been to a few jhandis and i've been to a few mandirs and and uh, uh, wherever i have been uh, the you know the taste of india lingers on and uh, that's one part you know the cuisine especially and and also the way we uh, continue to conserve our uh, heritage you know it's very tough trying to cling on to your culture coming out uh, uh, so many thousands of miles away but yes even even fiji in uh, mauritius in south africa in guyana in trinidad in suriname uh, you know uh, i was amazed to hear hindi being spoken uh, the way young kids are still trying to see how best they can uh, learn sanskrit in fact based on that i have uh, uh, been actually working on getting some scholarships for young pandits to go to india and and uh, right. uh, uh, get trained uh, to become pandits in uh, uh, at the cost of the government of india and we have been very positively working to train um the persons of indian origin we have uh, many uh, programs uh, fully sponsored by the government of india called the no india program where we are sending young uh, guyanese by, uh, and across the world actually the persons of indian origin to go back to india for about 3 weeks touch their roots uh, see what is happening in india and then try to see how best they can learn from india and also to uh, contribute uh, to the thinking about india in their own country so we are also giving them the itex scholarships the uh, the icc or the indian culture for cultural relations we have about nine scholarships every year for uh, people who want to study in india for a undergraduate degree for, uh, it's fully funded by the government of india we have uh, a few scholarships for uh, people wanting to go to india uh, to study indian art and culture dance uh, music whatever you you name it and and uh, we are also trying to see if we can uh, increase the amount of uh, uh, interactions uh, uh, among the youth because you know the youth are the future and it is for them to actually uh, get together and to know more about india and at the same time contribute uh, to what uh, uh, india is about across the world over to you yog over to you yog dr yog mahadev you. dr well in the meantime while... i know that you have a very busy yes i know you have a very busy uh, <laughs> schedule ahead of you you do have some late night meeting Yes so we want to thank you for taking the time out to be with us and to wish you and your family well I know that you are also sir separated from your family because of the covid uh, you know issues that's going on but our prayers and love with you and true you sir our thanks to the government of india for all the support you're giving guyana Thank you so much uh, Dr Yog uh, you're right um, you know due to the time difference uh, we do have sometimes midnight uh, video conferences but uh, you know that's part of the uh, thing that we all signed up for so thank you uh, to you and it's great to link up with the indian diaspora and i wish you all the best and uh, once again a very uh, happy celebrations although uh, very subdued this time for indian arrival day i wish that uh, next year we do it in a bigger way thank you thank you very much dear high commissioner to end you thank you. So you go over to you now you guys I'm very excited and uh, those were some very good encouraging words here from the high commissioner but we have also have two very well known faces here and I will take the yeah. the, the the senior one for us Terry Gadrads in the house 
I hope it sounds yes, good there. Indeed, indeed. And, and let us say welcome to our brother Ravi Dev, uh, who, you know, has not been in any way, um, in any way shy about representing his culture, representing his beliefs, and of course, being very pragmatic in his approach. So, brother Ravi, um, thank you and <coughs> welcome to this show. Well, thank you for having me on. You're very good up to now to get those greetings from the uh, Indian High Commissioner. So, as he said, unfortunately, we have a very subdued Indian arrival day tomorrow, but we got to make the best of what we have, you know, what God gives us. Wonderful. And my brother Terry Gadras, welcome to you, sir. <laughs> let me tell you before you say any, any, any word, let me inform <laughs> everyone that, you know, people may not recognize. But it's 26 years, Leonard, since the launch of Guyanese Babu. It's 26th anniversary. Terry, my brother, congratulations. You are a Guyanese icon. Thank you very so much. I appreciate it. And it's an honor to be in such company. Thank you for having me on. Wonderful. So brothers and sisters, just before we get to our discussion on, on our topic for tonight, we have, as you know, Tonight, we are looking at the Indian arrival celebration, Indian immigration celebration, um, because tomorrow is May 5th. It's been 182 years since Indians came to Guyana. It is not something to, to take lightly, um, and it is something that we take on one hand while we look as well at the contributions we are all making to the development of this country. And Brother Ravi Dev has joined us tonight for us to have an open discussion, not just on, on what contributions Indians might have made to Guyana, but what contributions we are making as a collective, as a people of Guyana. And of course, Brother Terry Gadraj has also, has also joined us to add his bits and pieces and his thoughts. So, Brother Ravi, let's get right into it, sir, and give us your opening thoughts. I mean, 182 th years is, is no small number. Well, it's not a small number, uh, Yogan, but uh, one of what one of the customs we brought that before any discussion, uh, be, uh, before we get into you know actually analyzing, discussing, uh, breaking up, put together, we always have music to put us into that frame of mind. We say to create a certain how, a certain feeling. So I would say, why don't we have our good uh, buddy um, Terry Gadraj to maybe give us a musical rendition? <laughs> to talk about our arrival. Terry, go ahead. Oh, oh yes, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Um, this, this song I'll sing, uh, and you can stop me anytime. It's a long song. Uh, I'll sing it. It's a song that I wrote in 1994, and I wrote it. It was right after Guyana Babu was launched. But I felt that we needed a song like this, you know, to showcase our tradition, our ancestors, and our culture. So um, I, I, I find it's very educational. It's my favorite song that I have written. I don't always get the opportunity to sing it. That's why anytime there is Indian Arrival Day celebrations, anytime around the world, I love to go. And the name of it is Indo-Caribbean Man, and it goes something like this. <clears throat> My ancestors came from India in 1838. They came to British Guyana as jihadis or shipmates. They crossed the Kalapani on the Hesperus and with B. Bahut Aja and Miyaji, Bahut Nana and Nani. Yes, I'm an Indo-Caribbean man from an Indo-Caribbean land. I love my Indo-Caribbean tradition, my culture, my education. I'm an Indo-Caribbean man from an Indo-Caribbean land. I love my Indo-Caribbean tradition, yes, the women and the children. 240,000 came down to this land. Indian indentured servants within a 79 year span, clutching onto their lotus and crying for Mother India with tears in their eyes and a prayer in their heart. Salam Bharat Mata, yes, I'm an Indo Caribbean man 
from an Indo-Caribbean land. I love my Indo-Caribbean tradition, my culture, my education. I'm an Indo-Caribbean man from an Indo-Caribbean land. I love my Indo-Caribbean tradition. Yes, the women and the children. So that's two verses. I can sing more later. Lovely. You know, I can interject anytime you need me. Just say the word. Lovely. Thank you for the opportunity. Lovely, my brother Terry. And you want to say a few words just before we go back to our more serious discussion with Brother Ravi. Say a few words. As you know, Abby Tunes Radio is also linked and hooked up here tonight. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I know all our listeners are locked on. I want to say hi to them because we have listeners locked on from around the world. And I must say it is an honor, you know, to be uh, making a little presentation for my favorite time of the year, the 5th of May, Indian Arrival Day. You know, we used to call it Indian Immigration Day. And I felt very honored that, you know, I was the first Guyanese to represent Guyana at the Bollywood Music Awards. And they were very impressed. They invited me again. So it, it was such an honor to share the stage with stars that you have only seen in the Bollywood movies, you know? <laughs> and I want to thank Mr. Kamal Dandana. You know, I was very fortunate to have even Shah Rukh Khan. He performed my song uh, around, around the world, all his tours. In Trinidad, he did that song five times. The name of that song is Saki Bum. You could look it up. In Trinidad, <laughs> Shah Rukh Khan, five times, one show. And he did it in Toronto, everywhere he performed that year, he sang my song. And I felt it was a great tribute, not only for me, but for Guyanese. And also very fortunate to have, you know, visited India and not just visit and, you know, check out all the, you know, Taj Mahal and everything. But <laughs> I was able to do seven performances in India. Wow. And, uh, you know, let me tell you a little funny story, right? So going yeah. to India, oh, you know, of course, you know, I envy like Surinamese and stuff, you know, other expatriates, you know, their, their parents taught them Hindi, you know, we were taught English, you know, I kind of was a little disappointed about that. So anyway, going to India, I was trying to brush up on my little Hindi phrases and thing, right? When we went now, and I was trying to talk Hindi, them guys now want me talk Hindi. They want me to speak English so that they could learn English. Right. It was really funny. And they knew the Guyanese phrases like, oh, me mama, da, 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 da. They knew everything. <laughs> so, um, so many stories I can share about India and, you know, performing for Indian arrival in many different countries and That's cities right. in North America. England, I've done that as well. Even when they have Trinidad arrival day, they call me. And I am very mm -hmm. fortunate to represent Guyana. And Mr. Yoke, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, my brother. And to remind our viewers and listeners out there, it's 26 years since the <laughs> launch of Guyanese Babu. And yes. Terry, we cannot let you go before a two lines from that song. Oh, oh, my pleasure, man. I'm so proud to sing Bengali Babu. And, you know, I am so happy that, you know, anytime any cricket matches, any sporting events in Trinidad, everywhere, Bengali Babu plays. It doesn't matter where I go. Uh, when we went to India, I went to national TV. I sang Indo-Caribbean Man, and I thought that was it. They wanted to hear Bangli Babu, and they wanted there to hear the story behind it. It's amazing, you know, but being a national TV in, in, in India, I sang, Oh, Bangli Babu, Oh, Guyana Babu, I am the very best of the Guyanese Babu. You are the very best of the Indian Babu. May come from the country they call Guyana, land of the bauxite, the rice and sugar. But you know, Yog, we got to change up the lyrics and say oil now. You know how it goes, right? <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> but you know, I want to say how thankful before I go. I am very thankful, grateful to our ancestors who brought the culture from India to Guyana. And not just songs like Bangali Babu that came from the sugar plantations and the rice field, but like Oh, my ninja, oh, my ninja, kena yes. and price not pay. You know, uh, I mean, darmat karo, bhaiya, darmat karo, darmat karo. Yeah, I mean, so many songs. So I'm so forever thankful, grateful to my ancestors for such rich cultural traditions and, you know, teaching us the right way. 
So Bhaiji Yog, thank you. Uh, Ravi and uh, everyone else, thank you so much for this golden opportunity. And let me wish everyone a very, very happy Indian Arrival Day. We have to be proud of Indians. Look at what I Indians are like CEOs and all the big corporations, the doctors, the IT engineers. I mean, and being here in North America, we see uh, the presence of India. Things like yoga, you know, Americans have adopted it. So right. much from India, meditation, you know, it's like all those things. And I'm very thankful and I'm grateful for India and our ancestors. And for you guys for giving me this opportunity to share a few words. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much, my brother Terry. And it's been a pleasure to have you on this launch of Room 592. <laughs> you know, yes, it's, yes. it's a pleasure, my brother. Thank you so Thank much. You, and we will certainly touch base again. And uh, yes. happy 26th anniversary, my brother. And uh, echo <laughs> back to your family. Happy arrival day. Thank you. Thank you. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank Love you, you Diana. Brother. Remember, there is no me without you. You are the ones who make me Terry Godraj, the Diana Babu. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my brother. Thank you so very much. So, brother Ravi, there is one proud, very, very proud, uh, you know, grandchild or great grandchild of an Indian immigrant. I think you see, coming back to our tradition, you know, one of the things we lost is this, um, the, the Indian aesthetic, that it is not recognized just because we came and were dumped into the plantations, that our aesthetics, even at the village level, where most of us came from the villages, there is this whole tradition of singing, of putting to music our story. And there are so many different musical forms where it is a biraha, songs of separation, because uh, our people just didn't come to Guyana. Um, hundreds of years before that, when the British destroyed much of what uh, used to be the Indian agrarian crops like cotton and other rice and what have you, to have export crop, the, uh, the place where we came from, the whole Bhojpuri belt, we wandered all over India. So this notion of us being separated from our family has been an, an old one. And there were songs to commemorate that. It's these songs about telling what your life is. Oh Maninja, oh Maninja. So I think um, we're very fortunate to have somebody like Terry Gadraj over in Trinidad. We had Sundar Popo, who in a sense had to almost excavate that tradition and to bring it back to life. And we have to encourage that. Because you know people can listen to long, boring talks by Ravi Dev. And it is that, just long, boring talks. And it doesn't really percolate, but people, look how Terry put the, the story of our arrival into a simple uh, tune and simple words, but people will listen to it. And we need more of that because that is part of our, our tradition. You are right, you are right, brother Ravi. And to our viewers and listeners out there, Please be reminded that, you know, we have started this program. We are having it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. And really, the program will evolve as we go along. Um, today, uh, we are celebrating, really, tomorrow is Arrival Day, Indian Arrival Day. And so today, we thought that since we have this program on, we brought on Brother Ravi, we brought on Brother Terry Gadraj. Later on, in a couple minutes' time, we will defer to the professional in the room. The commissioner of GCOM, Mr. Says Gunraj, is here with us tonight and says, Welcome to our program uh, and the launch of Room 592. Uh, good evening, Yog. Good evening to the other guests, Ravi. I see Leonard and I'm seeing a, a, a logo where I should see Terry. Good evening, gentlemen. And Yog, please accept my congratulations on this year premiere of a show that I hope will have a long and fruitful and useful run on the airwaves. Thank you. And just to let you know that logo you are seeing represents uh, Abby Tunes Radio, which is also multicasting our show across Canada and the U United States. So, um, brothers and sisters, let's come back to, to Brother Ravi. Brother Ravi, I want to ask you what might be an important question in everybody's mind. If we take, okay, the value of Indian culture is sacrosanct. You have represented that. Many of the Indian leaders would have represented that thought. How can we juxtaposition 
the, the, the reality of an Indian importance in a multicultural and multiracial society, especially given where Guyana is today? I think that's a very crucial question that needs to be answered, Yogan. I think Terry also uh, I mean, uh, alluded to it. First of all, he spoke about us as an Indo-Caribbean people. And this is a, a starting point that we must not forget. We are not Indian. We are an Indo-Caribbean people. It means that we were brought from India and into we were plumped into a situation here where you had hundreds of years of slavery by African slaves were made to labor in Guyana and a society was created called Creole culture, that society lived by. It was a confluence of European values with some African elements. Of course, the European values predominated and Africans tried to live up to those values, but we were put into that society. And in through the years, no culture is static. Our culture has been changed because of our circumstances. One scholar calls it that we were plunked into what is called a plantation total institution where everything was circumscribed for you, but not to get into any kind of long discussion. We, we were changed, our culture was changed, but we also changed the culture that we found, and that is important. It's a whole process of giving and taking. Part of the problem, however, is that because we came into this society that was, but let us say, Euro-African, the definition of not only Guyana, but the definition of the Caribbean has remained as a Creole society. And some would want to say it is, a, it is an Afrocentric society. And that presents problems when you have individuals like the Indians who have come with the culture and who have numbers large enough to have been able to retain that culture. So what we have put on the agenda for the last 30 years is that we must not see Caribbean culture in terms of biology as a tap root with only one root going back to Mother Africa. There is that root, but we must see it like a banyan tree where there are several other roots that were put down, just like a banyan tree. You have Chinese, we have Portuguese, we have the indigenous peoples of Guyana. All those people have roots into this land. And rather than looking at it only from one perspective as a tap root, let us say that each part of the, ba of the banyan tree might be separate, but together they form a very, very strong, vibrant, and almost undefeatable organism. The banyan tree can last for, for, for millennia, millennia. And that is what I see uh, is a challenge today. And I don't want to go off on a tangent, but part of the political dilemma that people like Sais and others are having to deal with comes out of that. That is it that there are some people who do not see not only Indian culture as being quote unquote authentic, that do they see that, uh, that people of Indian origin really ought not to be um, in the, the ruler, the ruling class, that somehow they're anomalous. Those are questions we cannot sweep under the rug. We must address them. And I want to end on this note. What we have put on this agenda is that we must never forget that we came and reached here people out of Africa who were literally dragged out of Africa as slaves. And what does that mean? They were brought here as chattel. Says as a legal individual will tell you, chattel means that they, you can have ownership of them. It's related uh, to the word cattle. You can own cattle. You can do whatever you want with that. And that has been the experience of the African Guyanese. And it is something that the rest of Guyana has to be very sensitive to. That if they are presented with a situation where they see that they have lost everything, where they see that they have no space for them, let's say economically or politically or any other way, then what might happen would be an extreme 
reaction. Now, as to whether um, that has the element of fact or not, it's not the issue. There's a famous saying in sociology that men define their situation as real, and to the extent they define their situations as real, it is real in their consequences. So if that is how they define it, we will have to deal with that. Right. Well, I like your analogy too, that you know, we, we don't look at it uh, as a single root uh, uh, you know, tree, a phenomenon, but you look at it as a banyan tree, as you said, because the truth is yesterday, uh, May 3rd was Portuguese arrival day. And so That's it right. symbolizes that we are a collection of persons, people, a collection a people that is a collection of, of many cultures and so forth. So brother Ravi, my, my thought here is that somehow or the other, maybe because of the political situation, um, you know, we seem to align politically. So people assume uh, uh, PPP is indo guyanese PNC is afro guyanese and we conveniently forget that now in 2020, both parties have a lot of persons from, from other races. And that is, a, that is, again, something that we have arrived at a juncture, rather either fortuitously or however we may want to describe it. When I came back on the scene in 1988, there was a situation at that time when Indians were a majority. And we said that presents African Guyanese with a, what we call an ethnic security dilemma. But if Indians, like all ethnic groups, vote as a group, then African Guyanese will not be able to be in the executive. And for a people who have gone through slavery, that is not, quote unquote, an unco it is not a comfortable situation. But in the meantime, whether we may say it is good, bad, or indifferent, from 1980, when Indians were 50% of the population, 51 to be exact, to, 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 nine, to 2012, they became 39.5%. It means that as of now, 20, 28 years later, Indians are probably about 35%. African Guyanese are probably about 30. It means that we are now a nation of minorities. And whether those groups still, by and large, vote generally for one or the other party, it means that whichever party wins, it means they were able to go outside of their base and agglomerate enough votes to get that 50%. And we should rather embrace it. And I don't want to pick on ones that is good or bad, but I think that in 2015, uh, when the PPP uh, lost office, they stepped aside six days later, and you had a change of government. And the sky didn't fall. Uh, there was a change of government, and things went on. At this election here, whoever the people of this country feels ought to govern it, that ought to be given the respect that it takes because no one group can dominate the other. It, again, I want to repeat it. From 2012, it means that any party that wins, they will have to get votes from, quote unquote, the other side. Yeah, that, that is well put. And, and it represents a, a country that is evolving. Um, That's right. On the, the unfortunate uh, thing is that you know we keep beating this this drum of of um, racial insecurity, and one gets the sense. I mean, and my question is this, brother Ravi: What do we tell our children? Uh, what do I tell my eighteen-year-old son about the future in Guyana? Be he, be that son um, Afro-based Guyanese or Indo-based Guyanese? What do I say uh, to my son? Well, what I, I have two children in Guyana, returned to Guyana and uh, stuck roots. One of my Banyan roots right here. My daughter now is at Georgian Hospital in the front line there. She just came home. Um, she started there. She's a first year resident or what, whatever they call it. My son is stuck in law school over at U Wooding. Uh, people forgot there's 22 of them stuck over there. Um, they need to come back home. Visit me. What I tell both of these two young people, who were very bright, both went to Queens, I think, you know, not to boast or anything like that, but the point is that they see and they are committed to Guyana. They are committed. And in their school, both in their country school, they went to Leonora and at Queens, I was very pleasantly surprised that, as you said, our people not only 
have evolved demographically, which is a quantitative change. They are evolving qualitatively. And there's much more acceptance. For example, um, at Queens, my son and my daughter both told me my daughter was a head prefect at one time, and she would have to go and look after, you know, some of these other classes. That, for example, the food we eat, that so-called Indian food, is eaten more by people of African and mixed descent than probably the Indian people, Indian kids who go there, because there's some little embarrassment about taking Indian food to Queens, that kind of thing. The point I'm making is that what do I tell my children? I tell them this, that you have to be your Guyanese, you're of Indian descent, but present that Indian aspect, but as within this mosaic. And let us accept each other for who we are, that we must not try to fold or force anyone into some cookie cutter. We're all different, but yet we can form this Indian tree. And I'll tell you to, to, to a great greater extent, most of their friends happen to be people of other ethnic groups both in med school, both in law school, and everywhere. I find that, that this is a new Guyana. And I think some of the older politicians, as I said on a program with my friend David Hines that we've been having on Globe Span, that they are using an expired strategy. They are fighting, they're tilting at windmills that have disappeared. And a lot of the fears that are being put into the head, minds of our people those fears may have been justified at one time. For example, that Africans will always be excluded, that Indians own most of Guyana. But we have to now disaggregate those fears and address them frontally. And coming back to the politicians, coming back to the politicians, one of our problems has been they like to beat around the bush when it comes to this race question. But we have seen how deep it is because it's coming out in social media. People are talking the truth as they perceive it or as it's been presented to them. So I think politicians also have to be very honest in addressing those fears from both sides of the divide. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, my brother, Ravi Dave. And you have been an icon in Guyana as well in terms of standing up uh, you know, for culture and, and preaching across the country that people need to stand up and, and respect and have other people respect their identity. My, my final um, uh, uh, request of you, sir, is, is to comment on the following, that um, you and I spoke offline and an interesting thing came out, that is that a race in Guyana, be you Indo-Guyanese or Afro-Guyanese or Portuguese-Guyanese or you can evolve, but your evolution does not mean the destruction of another. Your evolution is at the subsistence of the other. Can you take a minute to, to kindly expand on that, sir? Very good. I, I tell all my audiences, and this is where when people talk about Ravidev uh, representing Indians. One of the reasons for that, I said, and I want people to listen out there, I think it's mostly Indians, that no one can know no one who is not of African descent can know what it is to be an African, to be a person of African descent. After high school, I spent 20 odd years in America, very odd years. And I can tell you that it is across the world, not just in Guyana, where you have anti-African racism. And therefore I felt it was arrogant on my part to speak uh, for, uh, on behalf of them. But to come back to the, the point you pose, we cannot, no Indian, and I want to say this again, we will not be able to survive in Guyana if the other groups in Guyana also ca uh, cannot live in equality. This whole norm of equality, you can't have a society always half down there and half up there. Again, it may, may not be a problem. It may be a problem of perception. But I would say this, that we have to be our brother's keepers, as we say. We have to look out for each other and to ensure that, as they say, the tide should lift all ships so that African Guyanese could feel that, yes, this is our country. Indian Guyanese, Portuguese Guyanese, mixed Guyanese, all guys, and trust me this, Yog, 
with the oil that is coming in, we might become the minority in Guyana. And it'll be an irony of history, a very great irony of history, if we were to be flooded with new uh, people to come into here, whether from Brazil or from other countries, and that we now, both we, Africans and Indians, who are at each other floats to be displaced. That would be a disciplinary journey. So we better get act together and look out for each other so we may grow together. That's, That's my final right. and, and Leonard, that was a, quite an interesting comment uh, among many things Brother Ravi said. You know, he said just now, and I want to quote him on this, you know, the tide should lift all ships, uh, you know, and that's, a, that's an important, very, very important statement. And don't forget that the Amerindians are about 11%, mixed population is about 18%. So we do have, uh, you know, the, 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 the concerted effort we must make to ensure everybody's lifted, Leonard. Well, obviously, and um, I, I think I, I want to fully agree with him. In a couple of years, this, this, this landscape that you call Guyana is going to dramatically change in terms of what we see. And don't forget, I've been paying very close attention. You know, there was a time, and, and we got to call it and talk it as it is, when a little black girl and a little, little coolie boy, if you want to say, or Indian boy, I shouldn't use that, that word, the whole in hands, uh, it was not something that was accepted. Now, nobody, uh, it, it's, it's par for the course. Everybody's doing it. And that, for me, is one of the greatest things. So we are seeing that. But don't forget also, from the Venezuelan angle, and, and Ravi has uh, is very well put, uh, put that point there, we are seeing something that's happened there. I think the projections are about towards six toward 6,000 within the next couple of months uh, or within two years, there's going to come to Guyana. And so right. where you believe they're going to move on from here, they're going to stay right here. And, and right. if you go down along the East Bank from Grove going on to Horstelen, uh, there are a lot of shacks that's, that are being built on the river dam there. So these people are going to stay right here and they're going to intermix. And so eventually what you would see Indo and afro Guyanese, I'm not sure what we're going to call them, but it's definitely the landscape is going to change. <laughs> But indeed, and the other thing too, Leonard, is, you know, uh, when we leave, Brother Ravi, you said you lived some interesting years in the U.S. When we leave Guyana, we somehow find that we can get each other's backs. There, there are people, you know, I, I have quite a lot of friends over there that, that they, they forget over there you're all black, right? You're non-white. And, and so when we leave here, we find out that we're one. But over in Guyana, something seems to be wrong, and we need to work on this. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this true story. Uh, when I went in 1972, there weren't many people of Indian descent in New York. People used to point to me and say, that's an Indian, you know? You were that rare. Uh, but I, as Guyanese who left, could only leave with $15 in your pocket, and I'm going to Brooklyn College. You have to work your way through college. And so I got a job as a guard, security guard. Uh, uh, the World Trade Center had just been built. And they had all that filling from the basement. They had had some landfill and they were building some new buildings. Visit me. I ended up in a guard hut with a fellow from Nigeria, a fellow from Pakistan, a fellow from North Carolina, one from Harlem. But there was one Trinidadian person of African descent and one Guyanese from, uh, of African descent from Buxton. And this wasn't very long after the race riots. And I'll tell you, in New York, I was closer to anybody, to first my Guyanese brother, then my Trinidad brother, and then everybody else. You know, you you fall you fall into based on your other common views. But that's a very true thing that it, it, and you don't have to be categorized as black or not. In the Caribbean, I want to come back. We are a Caribbean people, and if the rest of the Caribbean accept us as a Caribbean people with a particular heritage. Don't force us to get us all that we have. We have something to offer the Caribbean too. You understand? We have things the Caribbean. And I think a lot will go a far way towards revolving some of the issues that play out in politics. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, um, Brother Dev, for joining us. Okay. Uh, it's been an interesting chat. Um, and I certainly look forward for another chat like this, a prolonged one maybe. And I'm certainly hoping to also find uh, one day the favor of brother Eric Phillips and yourself to come and we have a three-way chat and maybe, you know, expand from that going to the future. Well, I tried it before, Jörg. Um, I, we had, I had uh, on Channel 28, I had 
Eric Phillips, I had Vincent Alexander, I had Taku Mogense, I had David Hines. We have to talk. We have yeah. to talk to each other about all this. And hey, before I leave, I just want to say uh, the, the word is says is a very good singer of Chutney music. So please, before he leaves, ask him to give us, in addition to his wisdom from the commissioner, to give us a Chutney song. Right, says? <laughs> I didn't know uh, them yeah, boys. Just, them boys me boss me is back there, boy. Up when you're going, uh, <laughs> my my voice has been utilized so much for talking these days. Oh, it's not working oh. uh, too well for the singing, but I'll promise uh, to deliver some other good day for you. Very good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Ravi boss is back there. Uh, Ravi boss is back there. I take my leave now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you. Having thank me. you, brother Ravi Dave. And indeed, brothers yeah. and sisters, viewers and listeners, that has been brother Ravi Dave who has been a champion, not just for the Indo-Guyanese, but a champion for the upliftment of all Guyanese, uh, you know, so that we can all live with each other. Let me remind you all, viewers and listeners, that this is Room 592 with yours truly and with Leonard Gildhari, senior journalist. And in this room here, this little corner called Guyana, we seek to unleash the truth. We're going to get on to the hard talks now. And before we get to Mr. C.S. Gunraj, um, I want to tell you, viewers and listeners out there, that we're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30. And Leonard, on Wednesday, we're actually, actually going to look at the state of the Guyanese economy. We're going to have a hard, deep look at the Guyanese economy on Wednesday. But for now, the talk of Guyana, the interest of Guyana, it's what's not happening with the elections. Um, but, you know... To this point, Leonard, um, you want to say anything, sir, before we go to Mr. Gunraj? Well, absolutely, yeah. One of the questions that I want to put him in the hot seat, uh, the gloves are off now. Um, and should the Guyanese people hold all commissioners accountable for what is happening here? I want to ask you that, sir. <laughs> Do we I... hold you accountable, sir? I hold myself accountable, gentlemen, to the people of Guyana and to the constitution which gives birth to my office and to the Guyana Elections Commission. But more importantly, there's a picture that I take great pride in I, that I have in my office. It is a picture of me taking the oath of office. Uh, on the 2nd, of, 2nd or 3rd of February, 2015. And in my hand is a copy of the holy book to which I subscribe, the Bhagavad Gita. I believe that when we take oaths, we need to give meaning to them and we need to be serious about them. And it is, a, it is by no coincidence that every important office starting from the president the prime minister the chancellor of the judiciary all puny judges all court of appeal judges judges of the caribbean court of justice all important offices have enshrined as part of their structure that the office holder must take an oath if we remind ourselves frequently I try to remind myself several times a day of the oath that I took. And you bear true faith and allegiance to the laws of Guyana. And if we do that, if we do that, we could get a very far way. So I'm happy to be held accountable. And Great. it is in the knowledge that I am being held accountable that I try to discharge my functions and my duties every single time every single day in keeping Great. with what I believe is the best adherence to the laws that govern my office. Correct. Well, thank you for that because, um, you know, indeed all of Guyanese, if, if never before, if never before from March the 3rd to now, 63 days have passed. And every single guy and his young and old have suddenly gotten a rude awakening to this thing called guy and his politics and elections, GCOM. Um, and Mr. Gunraj, as you may know, I mean, as you rightly said on one of our other shows, 
if this thing was not such a serious matter, it would probably be the biggest joke of the century. But it is so serious. So, sir, let's get to the hard talk. What's happening with Recount and where are we? I'm happy that you asked me that question today because I have a few uh, answers to give. The journalists uh, that Leonard sent outside of GCOM to badger me after every meeting, uh, sometimes they get impatient uh, when we, we meet for hours and we emerge and cannot give definitive answers to as to decisions that we might have taken during those meetings. I'm happy to report that there is a gazetted order. Uh, it's making its rounds all the way, all, all around the, the media. It's officially released. It's, an, uh, it's in the official gazettes. It's a public document. I have some reservations as to the content of it uh, because I personally, I would have liked to see certain things different in it. In fact, since the publication of that order, I've been badgered all year. Uh, with questions about specific parts of it. And that, of yeah. course, goes back to the heightened interests of the Guyanese public and the public at uh, perhaps outside of the shores of Guyana as to yeah. what is happening in Guyana. Uh, that being said, I would have liked to see a couple of different things in that order because recently you've heard me uh, singing a, a, a hymn as it were, for transparency. I mean, uh, my, my quest for transparency at the Ghana Elections Commission is not a new, a new one. So the order is there. It is published. I believe that we have worked out all of the modalities that needed to be worked out to have everything in place for a start bright and early on Wednesday morning. 6th of May. Great. So we are going to have a start of the recount 6th of May, Leonard, and that is a momentous occasion um, that you and I on a number of occasions would have discussed whether it was going to even happen this month. So that's that's the good thing. Um, I know that you have some other things, uh, Mr. Gunraj, Commissioner Gunraj, to discuss with us, but I want to I wanna throw this hard one at you. Um, what is it in this order that is telling us that at the end of the recount, um, you know, it, it doesn't mean that there will be a declaration of the results of the recount? There, there seems to be some questions there. Uh, that is one of the questions that I'm being badgered with all of all this yeah. evening. Uh, I, as horrendous as it may appear to the average reader. And while I would have preferred, and I in fact advocated for that to be articulated with different language, uh, I am part of a I am part of a collective uh, in which the majority view uh, has, of course, to carry, regardless of how strenuously uh, I advocate my minority position. The reality is that at the end of the process results will be generated. And those results, of course, will be public because there are provisions, as you have seen in the, in the order, for the publication of results by district as they are uh, concluded. In simple terms, and my expectation is, is that when that is done, it is brought to the commission. The commission looks at it and determines, well, uh, yes, these are the authentic results, etc., from the recount process. And decides, look, we're going to use this for the declaration. And, and this should form the basis of the declaration. It's a, I would not want to inject or try to uh, dissect it unnecessarily and, and to imbue into it unnecessary confusion as well. Okay. Uh, it's a simple it's a simple process when it is done it comes to the commission the commission decides deliberates and 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 declares the result but but let me i mean you have been you would have been asking a lot of question in, in your life as, a, as an attorney at law so now you're facing the question let me ask you this let me throw it back at you everything was supposed to have been simple than it was for the past 63 days 
um, and with the, the, the feeling that the public has, how are we assured that such a simple thing will be simply managed properly? Yo, to answer your immediate question, I'll take one step back. And I'm not even sure that I want to say this on a public, in a public, a forum as public as this. But the reality is that I should. I saw a program aired last evening uh, on Newsroom that uh, I can't recall the title. How the 2020 elections were derailed or, uh, mm -hmm. or something to that effect was the title. Very well put together program and it did not have too many views. It basically was a, a, a collecting of snippets from various days in this uh, various important days in this 63 day uh, period that you refer to since election. I looked at it. And when I looked at it, I looked at the events. Some of them are as fresh as yesterday. Uh, I, and I believe that one of those, one of those hallmark events that I perhaps will live with for the rest of my life, not because of fear, or not because, uh, not because I was uh, traumatized or anything. I could not believe the audacity that I will be forced out of an organize, a building under the control of an organization at which, on which I sit at, at, on the board. Mm -hmm. And to see that, it, it makes me reconsider about the future of Ghana. But that's not what we're here to, we're here to talk about. Mm -hmm. You said that from March 2nd to now, and perhaps even before that, that things were not as simple as they ought to be. I agree with you. Because I keep saying this in the meeting, I keep saying this publicly, and I keep saying this to persons who I believe are competent to receive this information, that we should not have been here, not 62 days later, not 52 days later. Ravi Dev, who just left this program, said that in 2015, within six days, a new government was sworn in. And there was a concession by the incumbent, then incumbent. What we saw here, we saw deliberate attempts, deliberate attempts to thwart the will of the electorate. And you can't help, you can't help but share the view that uh, you, just, uh, you just mentioned, that simple things have not been so simple. I dare say that this is a simple matter and it will be dealt with in a simple matter, a simple manner, when the time comes. Okay, great. Well, I, I have, you know, another perspective that I want to throw at you, um, you know, that in terms of, there is a feeling out there that the chairperson, chairman, uh, Justice Claudette Singh, by virtue of the fact she said that the declaration stand until they are replaced, has effectively legitimized Mingo's declaration. Your comment, sir. I, I disagree. Mingo's declaration cannot be legitimized by any actions or... Because, you see, Mingo's first declaration was challenged and pronounced upon by the court. And let me use a simple analogy. If you are going from point A to point B using root X, and that methodology and that entire process was challenged in the court, and the court said, well, you can't go to from point A to point B, but root X must not be used. And you go right back. Go from point A to point B, and you travel again down Route X. Nothing, nothing changed. Nothing changed. Correct. Correct. You did absolutely nothing differently. And as a consequence, you can't expect 
legitimacy to be introduced into your process if you did the self same thing. In fact, I wish to say that I believe that the acts of Mingo, returning officer Mingo, subsequent to the Chief Justice's ruling, were perhaps more egregious than the than the first. Okay. Than the first. Okay. So, so there is no legitimacy to be given to the uh, declarations, or I, I still I still view them in my mind as purported declarations of Mingo. Mm -hmm. And no action. And in fact, uh, something that we keep missing is that the chairman herself refused to consider those declarations. And even when a motion was brought by Commissioner Vincent Alexander for the commission to consider those uh, declarations, the chairman declined to do so. Okay. And that is something that is important. Okay. But so you can do life into declarations that are illegitimate. Right. So I, I hear you with that. And uh, with, with your, uh, you know, with, I, I want to ask your permission here for us to just take a very short break. Leonard, let's take a very short break. But here is my comeback question to you immediately after the short break. Uh, you allow, me to, you allow me to prepare over the break, eh? Uh, <laughs> here is my comeback question to you. Given what you said there, that the, the, the declarations have never been legitimized, why then, sir, on GCOM's website, we can find Region District 4's declaration signed by Mingo on that website? Let's take a short commercial break. Over to you, Kevin. Kiteshire Radio, keeping you informed. Demerara and Essequibo, 99.1 FM. Burby's 99.5 FM. Kiteshire Radio. Um, Leonard. Beaming across the counties of Essequibo, Demerara, and Burby's, this is Kiteshire Radio, 99.1 and 99.5 FM. Kaicho Radio, the radio with a difference. Enjoy free nice talk with Digicel, the curfew edition. Get unlimited free talk to any Digicel number between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. All you have to do is top up $1,000 or more every day before 6 p.m. to enjoy unlimited free talk. That's a whole lot of gaff. No more boring nights. You can now call your mommy, daddy, your bestie, your boo, even granny to tell them all that Digicel unlimited free night talk is back. Terms and conditions apply. Digicel, they're with you. Unleash the truth in Room 592 with Dr. Yog Mahadio and his co-host Leonard Gildari. Keeping the most important matters on the front line. Elections, economics, politics, and much more. Room 592 on Kaitra Radio 99.1 and 99.5 FM. Kaitra Radio. Covering Guyana from coast to coast. Demerara and Essequibo, 99.1 FM. Burbies, 99.5 FM. Kaitra Radio. And we are back in room 592 with Dr. Yog Mohadio and his co-host, senior journalist of Kaitra News, Leonard Gildar. And today they have as guest tonight, sorry, they have as guest opposition nominated GCOM Commissioner, Mr. Seiskan Raj. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. And we are back. And uh, Commissioner, straight at you. Why are the declarations, those purported declarations, up as an official document on your website, sir? That I believe, Yog, I will leave. Uh, I will leave squarely at the feet of the chairman. You recall two Fridays ago. Uh, I've I've actually lost track of the days, so uh, I can I can highlight uh, activities by events now rather than than the days. Uh, two Fridays ago, uh, on behalf of my two other colleagues on the commission, uh, opposition nominated commissioners. I piloted 10 motions, 10 yoke, all to mm -hmm. hand, 10 uh, motions 
So the commission, one of which dealt with those with those declarations. And I, while I don't recall, while I don't recall the specific, uh, I don't recall the specific terms of it. But one of the motions specifically requested that those mo that those declarations uh, be declared null, void, and of no effect, etc. And you'd recall that the chairman voted against that. That being said, uh, that being said, uh, in fact, give me give me one second, and I will I will read the the exact motion. So I asked the the resolution that I asked is that the declaration of the election results of electoral district number four by returning officer Claremont Mingo made on the 13th March, 2020, and the consequential report prepared and submitted to the commission by the chief elections officer, Keith Loinfield, pursuant to the provisions of section 96 of the Representation of the People Act, chapter 103, be set aside, revoked, annulled, and rescinded by the Ghana Elections Commission. The chairman voted against that motion. So my short answer is that motion remains on the website and part of the records of GCOM currently as a consequence of the chairman's vote on that motion. So should, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not, Leonard, this question is for you, sir. Should private citizens of this country probably now take or, or seek to take um, legal action against GCOM? Because if that declaration, if, if hear me out, if Madam uh, Claudette Singh swore in an affidavit to J Chief Justice Roxon George to say, I will undertake to do a recount. It means anything that caused her to make that decision is null and void, is vacated. Should the citizens of this country then seek to take such action as to have the chairman um, vacate that or, or, or put it aside, that declaration of Mingo? Because it's worrying that it's just on the website. Leonard, that's for you, because I'm not going to put commission on the spot there. Well, I'm no, I'm not no any lawyer. <laughs> what I what I could say to you is I'm going to echo his words a little earlier, which in which uh, the good commissioner also a lawyer would have said that the court has ruled that's one, and for me it is neither here nor there. If there is a recount on the way, um, the recount has to go ahead and it has to be completed. Uh, with regards to whether it's on site or not, I, I, I don't believe. I think the court has ruled very clearly. Um, and the fact also that there's a recount ongoing and there's going to be results coming out from that recount. Um, anything else, any other thing that is posted elsewhere does not matter to me. That's all I have to right. say with that. Well, well, you know, Leonard, I put that at you because you're the senior journalist in the room. So, you know, I would, uh, you know, you're the one, the, the one along with Mr. Glenn Lyle that will be controlling the headlines, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's at your door. <laughs> that's at your door, my brother. But Commissioner, come back to you. Um, so now we have the recount on the way, set for the 6th of May. Um, however, sir, uh, are logistics in place to see that recount start at 8 a.m.? We know the container's got to be moved. We know that um, we don't know if last moment uh, your ACCC has to be fumigated as yet. Um, but, you know, are you satisfied that logistics will be in place for an ATM start on 6th of May? As I'm presently advised, Yog, I have to say yes. However, I am not, I am not blind uh, or unaware of those... I want to call them possibilities, but the fact that we experience them, I don't even want to call them possibilities anymore because they, the fact remains that they have indeed happened. And yes. Jim Jones famously had at his altar uh, a, a, a quote, those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it. Correct. If you look at all the, if you look at all the pictures, uh, of the, of the uh, massacre, the Kool-Aid massacre, as it were, at Jonestown, 
Mm-hmm. And you see bodies lying there and, and, and you see that sign. Those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it. We cannot, we could not be unmindful of, of, the, uh, of the act of uh, last minute. Well, I, th- I think it's last minute, but uh, in, in a back room somewhere else, part others might be saying, oh, that was perfectly timed. Uh, fumigation of the, of the convention center, of uh, removal, removal of persons who included international and local observers, uh, party representatives, etc., by riot police mm-hmm. from the uh, from from of, of, from the tactical services unit. We also remember the manhandling, the manhandling of of my colleague Commissioner Ropes and Ben, who insisted that some facility be put in place for to have the containers monitored. Uh, And then all of this happened, all of this happened and all of this delay occurred while what was happening? Well, and you know, I must say this, that evening of the 16th of March, when we were all gathered at that convention center, anxious as hell as to what the next steps were, We had a high-level team from uh, CARICOM sitting, waiting, I believe, I'm sure, anxiously to get this show on the road. You had persons gathered there, and everyone was taken by shock and surprise uh, when they were put out of uh, of the facility. And you know, that evening, I heard a whisper that court proceedings were being prepared. And I dismissed it. I told the person, I said, are you crazy? The president and the leader of the opposition have agreed. This process has, uh, has, is only uh, waiting to commence. No, that's not going to happen. I dismissed it. But you know what? I, in hindsight, I can blame my naivety and, and perhaps my hope and, and, and my faith uh, and, and I'm, I'm beginning to question that faith as being misplaced sometimes. My faith okay. in the integrity of men and women, perhaps. And, and, and really? that's quickly dissipating. So when you see those things, I am prepared for anything. I am trying to, to uh, box the inner recesses of my mind for all the possibilities that can be uh, pitched up at the last minute. Mm-hmm. and try to ensure that uh, those are catered for in, in our discussions at the, at the commission, etc., so that all bases are covered, so that we can start, make a proper start, have a credible and transparent and efficient process in a timely manner, and to have a proper outcome of this. I keep saying it. I, I, I want to revert to what you asked me in the beginning about whether I'll be held accountable. I, I feel personally accountable to the people of Guyana that right. 52, 62 days or 60 odd days later that we cannot deliver results. Mm-hmm. I know what my anxieties are. I could only, I could only multiply that by, by almost 500,000 for the people who voted, much less their connection. Right. Well, the, the truth is that, uh, you know, a lot of Guyanese are skeptical. I think one of our viewers made a comment just now. A lot of people um, like Andre Ramana is, is skeptical as to whether the recount is going to be completed. As you know, we have run, we are running into one hurdle or the other. And um, now we, we have, we, we, the world would have learned, if you check the tweets, you would have seen the U.S. government make a statement on the Carter Center. And just quickly to viewers out there, if you want to see a copy of the order that was gazetted, you can find it or the 60 of 2020, you can find it on the GCOM website. So you can go and read it up yourself and, you know, get to get help us ask Mr. Gunrad's questions when he returned. Um, Commissioner Gunrad, you know, it's been great to have this chat with you, and we're we're going to wrap up our program tonight because it's been a little prolonged night. We usually we plan to go for an hour, but we have gone an hour thirty. Um, but sir, you know, I wish that I could say to the Guyanese population to be very optimistic, um, and I will say so. We are eternal optimists, and it's good to be. 
um, knowing that people like yourself and other commissioners and so forth, you know, they're looking after the interests of the people. However, sir, um, you know, I would want to ask you just before I open, uh, I hand over to Leonard, what are your positive vibes for Wednesday, sir? Just like you, Yog, I am a, an eternal optimist. Uh, I, and I'm happy that Andre is, uh, is looking because I, I know that he tags me very often on, uh, on Facebook and asks me these very questions. So I'm not, I'm not new to the skepticism that is being expressed by uh, people like him and for many other persons. But let me say this, let me say this. A moment ago, I spoke about the perhaps misplaced faith that I have in my fellow man. But I believe that there is good in all of us. And I want to remind, I keep, I keep doing this too often. I want to remind every single person who has a part to play in this process, whether you're a GCOM employee, whether you're a police officer charged with responsibility for crowd control or uh, monitoring ballot box movement or whatever, whether you are a party agent observing the process, whether you are uh, an observer, each person, or whether you're a commissioner, each person has a defined role in this process. And if we examine our roles and we take it upon ourselves to execute those roles in a manner in keeping with ex accepted norms, decency, and within the realm of the law, we can go, we can have this process done very, very smoothly. Very, very smoothly. However, I am not unaware of mm -hmm. elements and and it's almost every public forum that i appear on i keep speaking about reminding about the forces that uh pm motley spoke about and yes. I, i'm mindful of those forces i'm mindful of those forces and i want to remind persons who find themselves in that midst or persons who are tempting tempted to join those forces those, those things don't last for too long. Those things don't last for too long. And the last thing I want to touch on, Yo, before I leave, I believe that it is very unfortunate that an important stakeholder like the Carter Center that has provided support to the Elections Commission from 1992 or perhaps before 1992, unbroken, unbroken up to the current election is being treated like so, in such a manner, is being treated by, in such a manner by persons who wield administrative and state authority, but persons who wish also to gain public office as, a, as an outcome of these elections. It is unfortunate to see the least. Indeed. And thank you for that, Commissioner Gunraj. Uh, Mr. Gilharry, over yes, to sir. you, sir. Well, just quickly, I just want to ask the commissioners, we have him here. Uh, for the normal, the, the persons out there who, who want to know how this process is going to work, so they attend uh, workstations or Conklin stations, how is it going to happen? Is it that I understand, I think today there were statements about audio, um, it's going to be uh, streamed uh, live on audio, and when it comes to certain parts, maybe the tabulation process, uh, that it's going to be um, video streamed. Could you give us a, a, a little rundown as to what exactly is going to happen during that day and how are they going to do the regions? Uh, Leonard, technology is evolving every day. You have security cameras in your home and you probably have 15 cameras. They're all shown on screens. If you want to see what's happening in your backyard, you can click on that screen for a, a, a greater view and to have, well, in this case, there is no view, there's audio. If you want to click in, and there's a reason why three of us are in this, uh, this Zoom meeting 
and all three of us are not talking at the same time. But consider that each of us was speaking at the same time. Each of us could be, uh, each of us can be uh, compartmentalized, and which one you choose to view, you can you can view. It's a very simple process. The technology has been available every single time. Where there are, there are hundreds of viewers looking at this program. Every single time we emerge from uh, the, every single time we emerge from the elections commission, and all of the all of the major news networks now go live, including uh, including your newspaper, Leonard. Thousands of people, thousands of people. If you add the viewership of right. each of those live views, thousands of people look at it at a moment's notice. Are you telling me that people do not have access uh, to simple tech, that simple technology, and people who have been so interested in this process will not avail themselves of it? It could be broadcast to social media. It could be broadcast in, in, on a specific website, any, any manner of ways, any manner of ways. It's a very, very simple process. Um, as for me, I would have hoped that the entire proceedings would have been broadcast, video and audio. Because I believe if you have nothing to hide, you, should, you shouldn't have a difficulty in, a, in, in uh, opening up your process to scrutiny. Right. But here we are. I, like I said, I believe that everything can and ought to be in place uh, for a, an early start on Wednesday and for this process to proceed unhindered and properly to completion. What I really including wanted, weekends, uh, including weekends and holidays. Yeah. Uh, what I really want to get from you, Commissioner, is is um, are they going to do Region One at the Region Ten, Region Nine? How is it going to go? You have ten workstations. How is it going to go? You've now? seen the order says, and that of course is something that I advocated against. But I'm not here to rehash rehash that. Of the ten workstations, two will be assigned to Region One, two will be assigned to Region Two. Three will be assigned to Region 3, and 3 will be assigned to Region 4. That gives you a total of 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. So but, uh, two, will con two will proceed with one, and, and, and so forth. So, so if Region 1, you know, some of the regions are much, well, all the regions are much smaller than, than 4. Um, if, if, let's say, the two that is doing uh, District 1, if District 1 is finished, will, will there be a rollover of, let's say, Region 4? No, I understand that they'll be moving to region. They, they, they will move to region five. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha. All right, Leonard. Well, it's over to you. You know, Yoga, I, I, I okay. want to say thank you very much, dear, as usual. Commissioner Gunraj has always expressed his, um, his willingness to be part of yes. any kind of discussion when it comes to um, yes. moving our electoral process forward. And for that, we would have to say thank you very much, sir, um, okay. for that, because well, at the end, at the end of the day, you, uh, we have to look at what's the bigger picture here. This is our country. Of course. We have to say it as it is. Um, there's going to be people who are going to be angry. They don't want it to come out for some odd reason or the other. Uh, we say, I say it's an odd reason. Maybe you would find another word. But at the end of the day, the story has to be told. Right. And be before, um, before you go, Commissioner, um, may, I, may I, sir, impose on your kindness? I know the next couple of, uh, the next 25 days are going to be extremely tough on you and the entire team at GCOM. And, and certainly our prayers and, and thoughts will be with you and all the agents and everyone at GCOM there. We certainly hope everybody gets it right. But we want to extend a, an invitation for you, to you, sir, um, to please uh, keep us in mind and give us an update uh, whenever you can, whenever you have time for, you know, um, a little scratch behind the ear, know that we are here ready to open our ear to you. But thank, thank you so you. much for being here tonight. Thank you, Yog, and I certainly will avail myself of that opportunity. Before I go, allow me to uh, wish the two of you and the entire country and your viewing audience all the best for arrival day. Uh, We've all, and, and I think Ravi, Ravi Dev said it very, very nicely. We've all come from somewhere, but we are here now. And none of us, I believe, is interested in going back to where our four parents came from, maybe except for a vacation or anything, if at all. Correct. This is our land now, regardless of where we have arrived from. 
it is our duty to uh, build this land that we uh, were fortunate to be born in and uh, take all steps, take all steps to ensure its prosperity and longevity. With that, thank I'll you, say sir. thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, and have a good evening. Thank, thank you very you. much. And uh, there you have it, viewers and listeners. We have had Commissioner Sais Gunraj, um, who has brought us up to date on a number of things and also answers some of the heavy questions here tonight, Leonard. Um, that has been, you know, the question about the, the, the declaration still being on GCOM website was one that I know had bothered you and I in our private discussion. So I was glad he was able to answer that. And what he really said, Leonard, is that is at, at totally at the feet of, of or the lap of um, the chairman. Well, absolutely. And, um, you know, we, we'd have to continue raising those questions, but I'm looking forward. There's a recount to, to, to start, and that is going to start on Wednesday at uh, 8 o'clock sharp. It's going to go until 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, and what is important here, Yog, is that uh, after a long fight back and forth, we actually are, have this happening. The world's, the eyes of the world is on Guyana at the moment, and we need to get this right, and we need to prove ourselves that we mature people. That's right. And to our viewers and listeners out there, it's been a wonderful uh, evening to spend. I know we had a long uh, discussion here tonight, um, but it's been very interesting. We had Ravidev earlier come on to tell us a little bit of, of the Indian arrival stuff there. It's 182 years of Indian arrival. Tomorrow is Indian arrival, Day Leonard. And we also had Terry come and he sing, sang for us two songs, two tunes. What a wonderful man. I, I, I think I did a, a, a special person, a, a piece on him a couple of years back. Um, but I can yeah. remember the days uh, where National Park was filled with capacity when the boy Terry Gadrats came and he, he burst into this world in a very big way. And of course, uh, Guyanese Babu and all those big so songs, I grew up with it. Yeah. But, but what is important, Yoga, to the back straight to this thing, two, two things um, that we should pay attention to. In a couple of hours, um, uh, we're going to start that recount. But today, we are also seeing 10 new cases of COVID-19. And That's that is right. something I'm, I'm really, really worried about. But we, That's I right. want to say congratulations to you, Yog. You're my dear friend. Um, this is a wonderful initiative. I had a, a tons of fun uh, listening to Terry. And of course, um, I had to step back a little. R Ravi Dave is in the class by himself. Um, and listening to him, it, it really um, raises the bar when it comes to discussion and some issues in there. And, and of course, it's a learning process for, for myself as well. Um, being in an arena, a different arena from the newsroom, uh, we have to, uh, to raise the bar. And I want to say thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be part of this. Thank you. And viewers and listeners out there, please know that tomorrow, um, both Mr. Gildari and I, uh, he is the host of the daytime show and um, elections watch COVID watch. So tomorrow, um, Leonard, tell us of your guest. Well, we do happen to have a man and that man there is none other than the High Commissioner, the British High Commissioner. Greg Quinn, always been a very straight up uh, man when he comes to talking about what is on his mind. Um, sometimes you wonder if he's guy needs more than a diplomat. But uh, there's lots of questions now. Uh, the British ABC and e, uh, EU, they have been making some statements uh, along with a lot of other organizations when it comes to elections 2020. EU. And so... What is going to happen tomorrow? I can tell you one thing. We're going to talk about what happens next. And of course, the diplomats are under pressure at the moment. Uh, there was that one plane ride on elections day uh, ending up in Essequibo. And of course, uh, some uh, column that came out that really painted that trip. They're, they're um, traversing the country or traveling around the country to observe the elections. Um, it raise, there's a bad light being shed on it. And of course, I, I believe that he's going to be eager to bring the other side of the story. And there are always more than one side to the story, right. Yog. So over to yourself and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So viewers and listeners out there, remember tomorrow at 2 p.m., tomorrow, Tuesday, the 5th of May at 2 p.m., um, you know, it's going to be uh, Leonard Gildari, senior journalist, and yours truly, in elections and COVID watch, as we will have as our guest, um, one of our guests uh, would be, you know, His Excellency Greg Quinn, British High Commissioner to Guyana. So we are certainly look, looking forward. And, and Leonard, too, what we can tell viewers out there, not only are we going to have Mr. David, uh, His Excellency uh, Greg Quinn on the show, 
but we're also going to start to analyze um, the statements that have been made on the various media houses by the members of the diplomatic corps. We know that the um, High Commission of Canada to Guyana made, made um, some excellent statements the other day. And we are certainly going to assess all of that um, tomorrow and on the coming days, Leonard. What's a good thing about it, Yog, is that uh, the gloves are off. That's one thing. And yes. then Yog will be interviewing Gil Larry and Gil Larry interviewing Yog. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Excitement. Great. And so as we wrap up our show tonight, Leonard, thank you for being here. Yes, and I wish to say a big hearty thank you to Kevin and Josh, our technical guys behind the scenes. They have been working hard to make the show possible. But, Leonard, we cannot say it enough. A big thank you to Kaichar News, the newspaper itself, the entity, and of course, to a man with a very, very big heart who really has Guyana in his heart in the right place, and that is Mr. Glenn Lau. So a big thank you to Glenn Lau. Absolutely. Glenn Lau. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, he, uh, when we took this idea to Glenn Lau to have this, uh, to have this show, I must tell you, brothers and sisters, viewers out there, listeners, that Glenn Lal um, immediately welcomed the idea of having a, you know, having an in-depth um, analytical evening discussion. And so I want to welcome you all that 592, room 592, is where we are unleashing the truth, as we did with Commissioner Says Gunrad earlier tonight, um, asking him the tough questions, the gloves are going to be off, and on Wednesday coming, Leonard, we're going to have Joel Bhagwandi, and we're going to be looking at the Guyana economy. We're going to be looking at uh, taking an in-depth view of where we are. What's the status of, of the exchange rate? What's the status of the productive and non-productive sector, given that elections are here or elections are stalled and also COVID is here? So it's going to be an interesting Wednesday evening as well. Absolutely, dear Jürgen. So uh, as we wrap up, and of course, Jürg will do the honors, he is the, the host of the show. I'm just a sidekick at the moment. Um, the, the, the roles have changed somewhat there. Um, but of course, as always, it's been a pleasure to, with you joining us from wherever you are all across the Caribbean. And Jürg, one of the things that I noticed that people from all over the place, they are from New Jersey, from New York, from uh, from Canada, people even tuning in from um, United Kingdom, and we know there's a difference uh, there. Um, I really had a, a ball tonight. Um, Terry Gadrad, yes, must come back to him. Yes. So thank you very much, thank Yog, you. and over to you. Thank you, and thank you, all viewers and listeners, and have a great night. Tomorrow is Indian Arrival Day, and let us spare a prayer for our ancestors as well as prayer a prayer for our descendants let's hope we can on the 6th of, of may let's hope we start a new journey that will see us put election 2020 behind us ladies and gentlemen once again from room 592 we say have a great night all of guyana across the caribbean and the uk usa and the wider world Good night, everyone. Leonard, to you, Kevin, Josh, Gildari, uh, to you, Leonard Gildari, and of course, the Glenn Lal, Abby Tunes Radio. Have a great night, everyone. Good night. See you Good tomorrow night. on Elections Watch with Leonard Gildari. Good night, everyone. Unleash the truth in room 592 with Dr. Yog Mahadio and his co host, Leonard Gildari, keeping the most important matters on the front line. Elections, economics, politics, and much more. Room 592 on Kaitra Radio 99.1 and 99.5 FM.